Hello and welcome everybody to the GDQ Hotfix. I'm your host, Etchy. We got a very cool special for you today, kind of continuing the, the RPG theming here. We got Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster. That's Final Fantasy 1, to be clear. There's a lot of Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters out there, but this is the first one. Uh, and this is going to be any percent glitchless by Sanjan. So a really cool run, really exciting. Uh, Sanjan has gotten very good at this game in a very short amount of time. So I think uh, Sanjan's an amazing person to show off this run. And I think I'll just go ahead and pass it off to her to get us into it. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Sanjan. Uh, I'll be running uh, Final Fantasy Uno Pixel Remaster. If you like casinos or you want to, you know, live the feel of Gamba or, you know, the good old Gamba in, in the game, uh, this is the speed run to watch. Uh, so with me here is my commentator, <laughs> Leggy. Please introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm Leggy Star Scream. I've played this game once or twice on this channel before. Don't worry about it. It's fine. I know things. <laughs> Sanjin's got a better time than me now. All right, so we're gonna. So the time actually doesn't start until uh, we enter uh, this uh, area here. Or, I mean, we press confirm. Uh, I don't know why my thing is freaking out here, but. So. Okay, I guess my, you know, controller uh, decided it wouldn't. doesn't like the sound of Gamba, so just give me a moment here and <laughs> let me go fix. Let me go uh, get. Have my controller get its act together. Yeah, we're starting off with the most important RNG of all controller RNG. I out or all right. Let me try a different port because or else I have to be playing with uh, my or my keyboard, which you know I can do it, but. Not ideal. While uh, Sanjin does that, Leggy, what is the story of Final Fantasy One? Tell me about um, chaos. Yeah. So <laughs> the, the, all you need to know is that we are here to kill chaos. 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 I need to kill chaos. Um, and look, if you actually want to know, like, the full lore, uh, Final Fantasy St Stranger of Paradise is actually, like, a shockingly good game. Like, I know it was you know, this massive meme for a while, but no, it's, like, legitimately good. Play it. Jack Garland is my bro and my <laughs> homie. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I never played Final Fantasy 1, but I did play Strangers of Paradise, so <laughs> I have a slightly different perspective on, I guess, this uh, this story. Yeah, um, and coming uh, to it from the other direction, having, you know, been deeply involved in FF1 speedrunning for a while before Stranger of Paradise came out, it was such just a beautiful love letter to this game. <laughs> Um, but we will have plenty of time to go over, like, the lore that this game does establish within itself, uh, once we get these, uh, names taken care of, because, as it turns out, uh, this game, of course, is gonna open with every RPG class- the- the ever-popular RPG classic, the two-minute unskippable cutscene. <laughs> Yeah, we can take a break if we need to, Sanjan. Yeah, I, I think my I, I think my controller's just like scared to face chaos. So uh, <laughs> just give me a moment, and uh, I'll be back. We'll be back shortly. Sorry okay, about yeah, that. we'll take a little break. Don't go anywhere, y'all. Hello and welcome back, everybody. I think Sanjan's control issues are now sorted. So, um, already did the intro stuff, already explained things. I think Sanjan should just go ahead and get it started. All right. So, uh, yeah. So, before we start the game, we can assign uh, four different names to uh, each uh, e 
each of our friendly neighborhood warriors of light. So, you know, in the classic theme, we're gonna let chat, uh... We're gonna let chat, uh, you know, have their hero moment, uh... This game has a maximum of 12 characters, so... We're gonna Twitch chat, gets to be a hero. Woo! A hero of friendly neighborhood monk, and then we're gonna have our... Friendly neighborhood team, uh, our host, Etchy here. And That's me. Tech team, who, who are goaded folks. As our fr as our friendly neighborhood gamers, so we start with this team because <laughs> two black. We we don't need any healing. Our healing is basically uh, do damage. As a uh, boss can't hurt you if it's dead. Yeah, bo <laughs> bo boss can't hurt you. If they don't get a turn most of the time, but as I said, if you like RNG and you want to feel you want to feel the RNG while you play this game, you know what? This is the perfect game for you. So. Timer starts uh, when we press yes to begin the game with this party. Uh, there's going to be plenty, as Leggy alluded to before, there's going to be like couple, like two minutes of cutscenes at the start and then another like one minute cutscene like a little bit further on it. But after that, we're going to just be doing a lot of gaming. So without further ado, uh, let's start, I'll count down from three. Three, two, one, go. Yep. So we're going to start things off with, you know, Ominous music and definitely, you know, no foreshadowing. Uh, definitely a good time to practice your dramatic reading skills as we get the details of a prophecy that we are going to be guided by. Yeah, I I'm not going to lie. I don't remember most of the plot of this game, so I basically just made up <laughs> my own plot when I do the speedrun since I have a... Uh... A script that randomizes uh like names like streamer names or like email names and then, and then i just basically basically like i have one for streamer names and it's basically like the game show that you don't want to be in so that you get so basically i think of it as choosing four unlucky streamers who have to work together and hint most of the time they don't get through because i have to be strict with my resets now you know i would watch that anime that sounds like the worst isekai formula, and I'm so here for it. Yeah, we get, we get some pretty interesting combinations. Uh, I'd say for one, I one of my PVs was with uh, Mike Uyama and and Pokimane. Don't ask why. Don't, don't ask difficult questions. And and then a lot of time I can and you know it's it's more fun to reset when I can just yell at one of the streamers for being bad. No, no, yeah, I usually just ye yell at the enemies for, you know, being too good and skill issuing me. Yeah, if you like random skill issues, uh, this is also the game because... So, each, each of our four heroes, so... There's a sort of formula that gets followed. I don't know what exactly the formula is, but... You, you basically are, like, predetermined to get some boost, like, in HP. And HP is, like, a very important metric. for Especially for, like, yep. early game and for certain bosses. Yeah, so the way HP growths work in this game is every level, uh, you get a random amount of HP that mostly determined by your vitality stat, uh, though some levels are pre-programmed to be uh, strong HP level ups. Um, whenever you get to a strong HP level up, or occasionally if you get lucky, uh, you get like an extra 20 to 25 hit points. It's incredible, especially because if you look at the starting party, those black mages only have 25 hit points, so getting a strong HP level up early can break a little bit of the early game wide open. We're going to pick up some armor and a weapon for our fighter to help me carry through this early game here. Um, and we're going to try to leave town, get accosted, dragged up to the castle, and the king says, Hey, yo, go save my daughter. And then we're like, yeah, okay, whatever, sure. So basically, uh, we have a warrior here mainly because uh, Leggy's going to be helping us out for the first half. Uh, she's basically going to, you know, be taking one for the team. But Look, you know, I, I get my job done out of the way early, and then I just get to take a break. Yeah, get to relax and chill, and then for the other half, uh, oh, that's not great, but okay. 
That was quick. You know, of all the encounters you can get there, that's probably the optimal one. That's going to get you level two before Garland, which is always nice, though it doesn't actually matter. Uh, no strong level ups on the Black Mages yet. We'll see what happens here. Garland does have the ability to just one shot, uh, especially the mages, but basically anyone if he really feels like it. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, generic hit into the fighter is optimal here. And and Easy. Garland didn't get a second turn, so that's actually really good. Yeah, this it's works a totally not okay. I'm sure just some random uh, person imp imprisoning the princess, you know, totally, uh, totally no foreshadowing here. Everything here just yep. happens for a really random reason. And speaking of really random reasons, um, level four is the first guaranteed strong level up for black mages. So getting the extra bonus HP at level three is really good to see right now. Uh, as we make our way through, our mages are going to basically have double the amount of HP they could be dealing with uh, right now. Yeah, so pretty much generally, like, the first thing in order is we got to go get a bunch of things out. Let us explore. But first off, we got to deal with uh, one more uh, kind of two more sets of cutscenes. Because after we save the princess, TM, uh, they're going to build a bridge for us. And they're... You know, I have many questions about how this bridge is being built without, you know, any raw materials on hand or structural supports or even how the bridge got destroyed in the first place. Yeah, there's a lot of questionable things going on here. Actually, these workers have built a bridge literally in like five minutes. I mean. Also, I love how they're, you know, hammering away down towards the bottom of the screen while the top half of the screen just, you know, fills in the bridge. They're very efficient. Mm -hmm. We're literally just making it up our own story here. <laughs> as long as you yep. talk about chaos, you're, you're probably right. So, yeah. yeah, we are going to stop in the inn to get a quick heal, uh, refill our spell slots on the black mages, and also top off everyone's HP. Now that we've got a couple of levels, yeah. Basically, overall, like especially, it's very crucial up until like the last uh, third. To like pretty much keep track of our spell slots, and yeah, as uh, Leggy alluded, uh, certain levels will give us increased spell slots. So think the uh, Dungeons and Dragons spell slots. I can tell you, I don't memorize them all. I just, uh, mm -hmm. I just have a feeling. That's uh, sometimes you just play this game, like you know, based on vibes. Yeah, I, I seem to recall you asking for bits and pieces of advice, and my answer just being like, I don't know, it's. It's, it's just vibes-based gaming. Yeah, there, there is, um, like, mechanics behind it, but a, lo a lot of this game, like, in the end, you just gotta feel it, up, feel it by vibes. But, yeah, early game and late game tend to be, like, like, the first hour of this is probably gonna be, like, the most dangerous just because, like, we die really easily and we're not that powerful yet. So I'll be making a lot of use of the quick saves, especially early games, so that I don't, uh, I, I don't cry myself to sleep. <laughs> basically. Yep. Uh, one of the nice things about this game compared to previous versions of FF1 is that you do have an autosave feature. It fires every single time we screen transition, which does mean that some of the most dangerous areas for us to walk are on the overworld, because we don't get a lot of those free auto safety saves. Yeah, and it's also, like, even though this, this there's a lot of variants, there's a reason why this SMS 215 and times can pretty much wildly vary just based on how nice the end game bosses are to you. Cough, cough. <laughs> yeah. But now that we've got, you know, the bridge cuts get out of, out of the way, you know, the single most iconic moment in Final Fantasy 1, we now have the Provoke a Walk. We're going to be seeing typically it's three encounters between here and the next town. Uh, we're hoping to get level four on the way so that the fighter is able to get a second hit off his basic melee attack. Uh, the way that scaling works is your agility stat plus a bonus from the weapon equals the amount of hits you do. Uh, we're going to find a lizard, which is kind of a really... It's okay. Yeah. Can, can be a little rude, 
Uh, cuts down very quickly. Gets level 4, gets those strong HP ups on the Black Mages. We're gonna see one more encounter here, right outside of town. Ooh, spicy. Yeah, ogres give you a good amount of money, which, uh, money's... That was rude. My, my, er, yeah. well, money's very crucial, like, especially early game, just because uh, we're gonna be going through some pretty dangerous dungeons here without, like, much, much gear. And I believe, I, and there's also the concept of advanced classes in this game. We're not getting advanced classes. That's too slow. Yeah. But the big thing we need money for in this early game is to buy spells. We just picked up the temper spell. We'll get into what that does in a little bit. But also, uh, money lets us buy the consumables we need to do dungeon diving. And also, it's what lets us revive people if they get knocked down. If someone died along that walk here to provoke and we can still continue but we'll have to stop by the clinic revive that character they'll be a little down on xp but you know it's still possible to continue and yeah, this is our friendly neighborhood pirates uh ideally we get turns over them but which is uh, this fight's actually going pretty well right now yeah the pirates not exactly the most dangerous enemies uh, as you see here uh there's a concept of auto battle in this game which uh it's a quality of life thing that was added in Pixel Remaster. Mm -hmm. And what it does is, I mean, it all battles, but we actually want it on because, like, it pretty much makes the battles go faster. So once we select our actions, it's a matter of just pressing auto battle, and we pretty much want it on as much as possible. Yeah, there's a few interesting quirks to auto battle. Uh, namely, there is a setting to carry over the status of auto battle. Uh, between fights, and if that's on, it actually speeds up the transition from the overworld into a fight. So, that becomes a really interesting way of just shaving a few extra seconds off fights. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that when you're in auto battle, you will continue to do the same attack over and over again. Uh, but potions in particular... Uh, need to be retargeted every single round, otherwise they the targeting gets all kinds of weird. Yeah. So you see here, uh, I'm pretty much... I got a preemptive strike, which is actually really nice, because these enemies are pretty dangerous. And then now it's just pretty much a matter of just uh, letting this game scroll. It's an auto, it's a quote-unquote auto-scroller. Yeah, by the time we get to the next town, we need 1,000 gil to buy the next spell we need to pick up. Um, we need a pile of money for consumables, typically between six and eight hundred. We need a hundred gil to stay at the inn. If we get lucky and we get a lot of money, we might be able to buy a second copy of the next spell we're picking up, but that's not guaranteed by any means. Yeah, I'm actually going to take uh, a little bit more time to grind before, because the next air the next dungeon that we're going to go to is extremely dangerous. Also, poor Twitch yep. chat getting beat up. Yeah. Uh, early on, uh, the monk experience matters a lot less than uh, the other party members, especially the Black Mages. Or the fighters' levels are completely uh, worthless. Uh, once we start getting into the mid-late game, we're really going to want to start getting levels onto that monk. But it's an RPG. The amount of experience enemies give scales as you go, so the monk dying here is not actually the worst thing outside of the little bit of extra cash it's going to take to revive. Uh, I assume you're going to be doing that grinding here in the Corneria area? Yeah, I'm going to try to grind to level 8 and try to get a second Dundara, which some encounters, getting like Buccaneers here is actually really nice because, hey, speaking of Buccaneers, they give us 600 Yo. kill. Yeah, this fight is the optimal fight to get at this stage of the game. Uh, like you said, you know, 600 gil, since we're trying to hit for, you know, 26, 27, 28, 100 gil, a uh, fight like this is going to just really fill our pocketbooks in ways that we'll be able to carry forward quickly. All right, these bookers are very rude to the tech team, so I'm just going to go in again. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I, I ideally yeah. want to end here because if, if I had to resurrect in the next town, it's like 200 gil, and I, you know, uh, I, I I ain't got no con that kind of money. I'm trying to, I'm trying to pay the bills, you know.
Yeah, there's an interesting uh, dichotomy of opinion between runners about whether or not they want to grind near Corneria, because if you do the grind there, it's cheaper to heal, it's cheaper to revive if someone gets knocked down. Um, but if you go all the way down to Elfland, our next town, you can buy the Thundara spell, which is an AoE magic spell that does a bunch of damage that basically one-shots every single encounter on the ocean, so the actual fights themselves become faster and thereby safer, because enemies get less turns, they have less time to do damage to you. Yeah, so since I got the book in there, I'm just gonna buy a... Uh... So technically, like, in an actual PB tip, I would actually, like, just take this as I go and go right now, but I'm gonna... Since, uh, I, I want to get level 8, since the da uh, said dungeon was da really dangerous, so I'm just gonna go outside and do one more round of grinding. Like, yeah, each runner kind of has, like, a different approach to how they handle... how they deal with this. Yeah, and the other nice That's thing true. about going all the way up to level 8 is that at level 8, Black Mages get access to their third charge of level 3 magic, meaning we'll be able to cast a third uh, Thundara as we go into Marsh Cave. Yeah, so we're, so we're, we're, we're making pretty good progress, but I I would probably rather, I would very much rather have, like, the insurance just because, like, early game is just so dangerous. For sure. And, you know, especially in this uh, showcase setting, uh, we want to take a little bit of safety. You know, we're not we're, we're not grinding for PB attempts here. We're trying to show off the game and how awesome it is. And no one wants to sit here and watch uh, two hours of Marsh Cave resets because that's what PB attempts actually look like. Yeah, that, that is like a, re a real description of resets because especially like when you're when like you're trying to get top times like you're just gonna sit you're just gonna sit in misery or you and your four streamers of light are just gonna you're just gonna cycle through a lot of streamers let's just say yep. going through uh, marsh cave another thing to note is that enemies do have the ability to drop items in this game uh one of the sahagans dropped a potion which you know at this stage of the game we'll take all we can get yeah i pretty much just taking every encounter here because the xp helps a lot, all, or all the XP I can get. And I might as well, since, uh, <coughs> excuse me, since I have plenty of resources. That's rude. Indeed. Yeah, big eyes have that gaze ability, which paralyzes. Uh, paralyzed characters have a 25% chance of recovering. Otherwise, they just sit there and look pretty. Wow, the, the big eyes are just going in. I think one more encounter and I should be good to go. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, different runners do have different thresholds for what they consider safe in both PBs and in uh, marathon settings. Um, we are going to be taking a fair bit of resource into Marsh Cave, which is going to make this honestly probably really straightforward After, as we get level 8 there on the monk. Yeah, and that's a pretty good level. But even then, Marsh Cave didn't just, uh, you know, be really rude to me. So, but hopefully that shouldn't be the mm -hmm. case. But generally, uh, yeah, in a real PB attempt, I would have gone. I would have just gone for it like two minutes ago. But since, yeah, we're we're just gonna be chilling here. Yeah, I've seen like people go going so far as to not stop in Cornaria at all on their way over if uh, the resourcing looks good and just try and push down to Elfland as fast as they can. I've seen end. people... Eh, that's fine. I have a... for it? No, I just... I'm just gonna tent. That's fine. We have a... Because I, I did buy Thundara for my other mage. I just realized it. Because I mm -hmm. generally should have... That's rude. Yeah. Uh, there was actually a tournament for this game in category last year. And so... Honestly, a lot of the safety strats, a lot of the more consistent uh, strats really got honed to a fine point during that event. That's actually a pretty good encounter. Ooh, that is a tasty encounter. Yeah, I like having this early. That's rude. Until, uh, until like, after Marsh Cave. That's rude. 
Now that's still, you know, 500 gold in XP. Yeah. I'm actually gonna tent here, since, uh, mm -hmm. I didn't in. So, like, there's still some valuable items that we are gonna grab in the cave and that I can, like, easily make up. Just for safety, but ideally, I don't use that. But here uh, is the terrible cave. I'm just gonna kill this. Yeah, Mar Marsh Caves is the worst. All my hobbies hate Marsh Cave. Um, vanilla uh, vanilla speedrunners, randomizer players, everyone hates Marsh Cave. It is the worst. Uh, in vanilla, uh, enemies have so many status effects that they'll just throw at you left, right, and center. Uh, in randomizer, there's too many different kinds of enemies, so bad stuff can get randomized down here pretty straightforwardly. Um, in this game in particular, we've got enemies that can poison, we've got enemies that can stun. Uh, Shoutouts to that crawler. We've got uh, gargoyles uh, and scorpions, and which hit like are, trucks. Yeah, they, they are the worst. Okay, that's a really good preempt. I'm gonna kill this. I'm actually gonna and kill course, it just because I preempted it, and I don't want them taking turns. Yeah, and you know, really, honestly, that's a really heads-up play. Um, if you do get the preemptive strike on some of these encounters, if you know you can take them out, uh, that's often not necessarily faster, but definitely safer. So I'm also gonna kill this encounter because I might as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm. I'm typically on team. I am running away from. It every gosh dang fight in this dang cave. Yeah, generally I would also, like, run away from every single encounter, especially on PB pace, but... Yeah. Uh, we're gonna come in here. That's a good preemptive, uh, we're gonna but... Yeah, we're gonna pick up a cottage and a potion, and we're gonna go down to uh, the next encounter, which is going to be in a box. Uh, this version of FF1 works very differently compared to every single other version of this game, and there goes the tech team. Yeah. Oh god, can you still hear me? No, tech team. I'm actually gonna restart, because I chose to skip the... I chose to skip the... grabbing the Phoenix down. Hey, that, that's why they're extremely rude gamers. Yep. Uh, but of course, Sanjin here showing off, you know, the power of the safety save down here in the Marsh Cave. Uh, even with the autosave at the start of the floor, uh, she saved halfway through, which means we're going to save a fair bit of walking and a few, fair few encounters. Uh, but as previously mentioned, uh, here in this box are Pisco Demons. They aren't on the tile like they are in every single other version of FF1. They are actually tied to the box like you see in a lot of later Final Fantasies. This is annoying later on for some reasons we'll talk about as we go, but the other big thing about this game is that encounter packs are deterministic. In every previous version of Final Fantasy 1, that encounter can contain anywhere from two to four Pisco Demons. In this version, you're always going to see the four, and it's the worst. All right, so now I'm gonna just flee because I don't have any more Thundars, and I'm gonna pray to uh, my favorite deity here that I can escape. Please, Which please, please escape. And heal Etchy here because uh, he needs to be alive. And I'm gonna grab the Phoenix down here still for safety. Thank you yeah, for healing me. You're welcome. <laughs> Yeah, the Phoenix Down is a really useful safety here, especially because, again, one of the big things we're considering right now is getting XP onto those Black Mages as we go, because we'll have some level thresholds that we're going to be needing to hit uh, coming up relatively soon. So having the safety of being able to pick, pick up a Black Mage as we go is going to be really important. Yeah, the bare minimum I can take is just, like, one Black Mage and either the Warrior or... Uh... Either the warrior or the monk, because both of them are pretty expendable, but... Yeah. Please let me go. Okay. Oh, whenever I think of Pisco Davis, I just think of those little tentacle or the... What do you call that race in Baldur's Gate 3? I don't know. Oh, the Mind Flayers. Yeah, the Mind the, Flayers. Uh, and you would be correct to make that association. Uh, 
at Final Fantasy One originally started as basically D and D fan fiction, more or Whoa. less. Um, there's a reason. Uh, we'll see later on. We'll see in Evil Eye, which was originally just straight up a D and D beholder. Uh, Tiamat is, you know, the evil queen of the evil dragons in D and D, and you see that also in like the spell charge system, like. FF1 is a D&D game at its core. Lipids, thank you. Thank you, chat. Yeah, I've only done, like, a, I'm, like, a casual enjoyer of D&D. I've only done 5th edition. Five means good stuff. Alright, so, pretty smooth, and, uh, you know, we get to uh, roll the dice some more. So this is, a. Uh... Yeah, so this is the kindly king of Northwest Castle, uh, who lost his crown down in the Marsh Cave. Surely he's going to be incredibly grateful and not betray us or anything. Oh no! Oh no, it's Astos, King of the Dark Elves! Whatever are we going to do? So... So this is why I pick up Temper. Especially, because... Astos uh, has a lot of HP, Al. And, and a lot of AoE magic yeah. to boot, which is the worst. Yeah. Atlas has like 480 HP, so we're gonna hope that uh, they can hit Twitch check and hit through uh, dark, uh, the s cool sunglasses. Okay, Twitch check. Yo. Respectable. You're not Twitch chat. Twitch chat. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Good job, team. Good job, team. Yeah, two turn Astos is always incredible. Uh, especially because, as we saw, uh, one of the other major changes from every single other version of Final Fantasy 1, uh, enemies, instead of going in a set order through their spells and abilities, will just do whatever the heck they feel like. Astos typically doesn't start throwing out the AoE magic in previous versions of this until, like, the fourth or fifth turn, and that's if he doesn't decide to punch you uh, in the middle of it. Yeah. Uh, whereas in this game, just last see with thunder turn one. Oh, that's a really good. I'm just gonna kill this encounter. Get yeah, him, boys. That's literally free money. Boys, gals, and others. All right, so I managed to keep my uh, cottage, which is actually really good because cottages sell for a lot, and generally tents just do the job better. And, uh, just as mm -hmm. good. Yeah. As, as we get later in the game, uh, we don't really use camping supplies anymore because they're slow. But, yeah, early on, they're, like, especially for a new runner, they're pretty efficient. Oh, that's... I'll take that. But uh, for this point, uh, I also don't really care about what happens to my monk and warrior because I am going to try to reach uh, an XP threshold for... The next, the next big boss that we're facing, but pretty much from here on, we're uh, gonna play the game of rounding up supplies and doing chores for people. Wow, Twitch Chat's HP is uh, kind of low. Yeah, um, the the Black Mages are actually doing really nice on HP. Yeah, um, we're typically looking to see about. 140, about 100 to 150 uh, coming up on the next major boss fight. Um, we've got a couple of levels to get there along the way. Uh, Twitch chat's HP does not actually start mattering for another hour. Yeah. I'm just going to flee from this. Yeah. Uh, as we go here, uh, the next major level threshold we are looking for is level 11 on the Black Mages. Because, well, excuse me, it's level 12 where you get your first level 5 charge of magic, um, which is what we're going to be picking up in the next new town we get to, Melmond. Uh, it's going to be Fyraga, Fyraga Good, Fyraga Big Fireball. Yeah, now we're doing a bunch of chores here, uh, giving this la lady her crystal, or the witch her crystal eye back. And she gives us a jolt tonic, which we'll, we can take to Elf, Elfheim Castle and awaken the prince there. And the prince will give us a key yeah, that gives us lots gonna... of money. Who likes money? Yeah. 
In the meantime, we're just going to raid Matoya's medicine cabinet, pick up some extra potions. Um, it's really convenient at this stage of the run, especially because by now that we're out of Marsh Cave and we've taken on Astos, we're probably out of a lot of our consumable resources. So just having that quick stack of two potions and an antidote to top off is really convenient. Yeah, it, that, that thing has saved my life a couple times before. Hello, please. I should say that your but, movement is like pretty important because uh, encounters are step-based. Yep. And in fact, uh, if you reload a quick save, uh, the number of steps to the next encounter is actually part of the save data. So you will be able to re-roll what that encounter is, but you'll still have to take the same... You'll still get an encounter in the same number of steps. They've just been relentlessly bullying, uh... Etri and the tech team. I'm gonna... In... In, uh... uh I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna kill this. Yeah. Uh, typically, you'll see runners taking an in somewhere in this area. Now that we've gone uh, out of Elfland and doing the loop, ideally, you kind of want your resources to hold out to, until you get all the way back to Corneria. But some days, enemies just decide to punch you and then punch you and then punch you and then punch you. And there is no shame in stopping in Corneria on the way back down for Batoya or here in Elfland as we're dropping off the Jolt Tonic. Uh, I don't... Uh, this game, this game, the, this part is basically one small favor, yeah, but after that we're just, uh, we're just cruising on, uh, getting to the end game. Mm-hmm. Uh, thankfully, the it one small favor also gives us rewards on the way, unlike in RuneScape. <laughs> <laughs> it's still wild to me how, like, the first nearly an hour of this run is getting the first crystal lit, and then the second hour is the rest of the run. I would call the first 30 minutes the Marsh Cave Simulator. Or should I say the prey that your streamers, <sighs> your streamer team, uh, gets their act together. Which results can vary, I guess. Yep. It's still getting some really nice encounters. Uh, money is still really important here. Um, we're going to be doing some shopping once we get back up to Corneria. So the more money we have, the more we can turn into either consumables or a piece of armor once we get to Melmond. Yeah, generally, like, the more supplies I can buy, the more aggressive I can be. Mm -hmm. With uh, the next... 30 minutes or so, which is also, like, pretty crucial. What are your thoughts on the silver armlets? Uh... What do they... I think they give you armor, right? Because I... Yep. The, I see, they're a piece of bo body armor that any character can wear. I just go for the protect ones, uh... And then I buy the one... I don't buy... I only buy the one for the monk, like, later on, just because. Mm -hmm. But I... I was thinking of actually skipping that if I could buy three protect garments, because I do like the three protect the thingies that you can get later on, but those are so expensive, and usually I would have to do a second yeah. a second menu to buy them, which also is unfortunate. Go away, NPC. Mm-hmm. But in the meantime, we're gonna sell off all all the stuff we've been looting. Um the two cottages we picked up worth a thousand gold each. We're gonna buy some gold needles. Uh, which cure petrification. We're going to buy some Phoenix Down. We're going to buy a pile of ether and a bunch of various potions. That is way too many potions. I don't buy this many. I'm not that desperate. I have to make sure I buy everything because I've bought accidentally bought high potions instead of ethers before. I've done that plenty of times. Yep. Uh, the nice thing about ethers in this game, um, it, because we're on a charge system as opposed to an MP system, uh, you don't get, like, 50 MP back or whatever. Instead, you get back one charge of every single level that you have charges for. Uh, which does make for some really interesting routing through this next stage of the game, where you're, where part of what you're trying to do is optimize the number of charges you get back every single time you chug an ether. How dare they ambush the Twitch team. 
that's that's funny that the monk got the escape. Uh, so I think in terms of fleeing, black mages have a better chance of escaping than the warrior characters. Um, I know that the thief has the highest. I forget what the exact formula is in this. I know it's completely broken in NES. I think, it, uh, yeah. And the fun thing is that each version of this game uses like a different party. So I think the NES version uses two warriors and two black mages. Correct. Um, and I know that uh, PSP, I think uh, world record is still fighter, thief, white mage, black mage, though they finally routed out uh, class promotion in that. And then GBA is a lot closer to this route with a fighter, a monk, and then I've seen red mage, black mage, I've seen two red mages, I've seen two black mages. Um, if you're playing it safe, you take a, a black mage and a white mage. Yeah, I've seen people in Pixel Remaster also use a thief instead of a black mage. Like, there's different ways you can kind of go about this, but I think the fastest so far, like, at least for this, is one warrior, one monk, and two black mages. Mm hmm And part of the reason for that is uh, one of the mechanics we'll be getting into shortly. Right. That is also unique to this version of FF1. Yeah, I gotta confess, I learned this run in, like, like a month ago. Because I asked people, like, hey, what should I run? And then everyone was like, run one of the Pixel Remasters. And then I was like, okay, uh, which one? And then people recommended one to me, because I like I like runs where, like, you have to think on your feet. Mm-hmm. Like, look at the little cute black mage go. It's right. <laughs> right? Who doesn't love an adorable little black mage? Ah, sure. And also, one interesting thing I should note is the the party order is actually kind of important because it does decide uh, monsters do tend to aggro or like hit the top slot more than the bottom slots. There's a formula for yep. it, but uh, I guess so knows, the answer me. that. <laughs> That's why you have me along because I know way too much about the inter intricacies of this silly little video game. Uh, 50% of the time, you're going to hit the top slot, 25% of the time for the second, and then the remaining 25% uh, is split among the last two slots, so one eighth each. Yeah, so the reason why I spent all my money here is that all the loot that you get from the dwarf cave, or whatever you call it, uh, pays for itself, as you can see here. So we needed 8,000 gold for, uh, both the Faragas, but now we're rich and can afford it. Yep. We're gonna pick up our fireballs and make our way down into the Earth Cave, where the vampire, the fiend of the Earth, lurks and has been draining the once prosperous fields of Melmond of their ability to gr grow and sustain life. Yeah, basically, uh, it's which chat and crew, uh, are gonna fix all the problems of this world. Indeed. Um. Do I have Thundaras? No, I do not. Well, this yeah, is I think you also have experience. Thyragas at this point, which is also really, really sick. This is my just desserts. Okay, thank you. I'm just gonna flee. I'm, I'm lazy. I'll, I'll let the spiders live. I'm saving the animals. <laughs> Alright, so I did choose to use a tent here because it'll save on supplies and... I'll yeah, tents, uh, in addition to healing you back to maximum health, have the side benefit of giving you two spell charges for every level back. So they're basically a full heal plus double ether. Yeah, they're money wise they're just really efficient, but like, especially for a new runner. Mm hmm And as you get later into the game, they kind of fall off because, you know, you have to sit through the whole animation of the tent. But at this stage of the game where money is still an issue and we need to value it over 
necessarily doing the optimal go fast, uh, they are really helpful. I can technically kill those hill giants because I have Frogger early, but I don't like killing them. They have a lot of HP. Mm hmm. Uh, we are going to stop in this room, pick up a Coral Sword. Um, we can equip it to the fighter. Um, it'll be the last upgrade that fighter ever gets. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I just made it to get through this dungeon in One Piece. I hear the One Piece is real. Yeah. I've never watched One Piece, I confess, so I can't comment about that, but I'm going to say yes. <laughs> Actually, one of my girlfriends and I have packed that we're not allowed to break up until we finish watching all of One Piece. Uh, for those of you who are familiar, we're currently in Skypea. There's like, isn't there like 600 episodes or something of One Piece? Oh my gosh. Or like Many something more. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, no, it, we're at, like, 1,100. <laughs> I see. Yeah, because that thing's been, or that show's been running for, like, some uh, really lo long amount of time. Getting that level 13 there is actually really good, because then I get my second one. Hey, yeah, you see here, I'm just playing, like, very much overly safe here. Yeah, no, uh, the One Piece anime started in the 90s. Such a long time. All right, that's actually really good, because I want my monk and warrior petrified so that they take hits for my mages. Yep. Unlike every other version of Final Fantasy 1, uh, petrified characters oh, have two things going on. Amazing. Yo, that is sick. Where's this in my, run in my real runs? Okay, that's, right? not, that's not sick. Okay. It's a little scary. Okay, okay. But this is why we bought those extra gold needles. Yeah, that's... Um, yep, exactly. I'm actually going to click uh, save Petrified here. characters have two major properties you don't see in any other versions of Final Fantasy. Um, they can still be targeted by single target effects, which means that currently 75% of the time, uh, if someone wants to punch the party, it'll do nothing. And also, petrified characters will still gain experience, which is really useful for the monk, because the monk's going to be our main source of damage once we get into the Avengers Endgame. No! Why'd you petrify tech team? Rude. And then we get nothing to really to mention about this vampire, or our friendly neighborhood vampire, but I've seen it do mean Wait, things. Wait, there's a vampire? So. It's the little cute little bat thing that turns into... Oh, no. Oh, hey, it's a Dracula. Yeah, because we have Faraga, <laughs> I mean... I'm going to say goodbye. So, I want my... Pretty much, uh, like, the latest I could get my... Warrior plus Monk. Petrified is... By the second time, by the time we go through this cave again, which spoilers, we do go th through this cave again. Mm hmm. There are backup strats if it doesn't happen, but getting it this quickly and early is optimal. Yeah, because it saves a lot on supplies. <coughs> I'm fleeing from this. Mm hmm. Yeah, as, as it turns out, having to heal uh, only 25% of the time because as we're going, Eventually, we're going to get to the point where our Black Mages are going to basically be two-shot most of the time. Yeah, thankfully, uh, Aethers in this game are cheap. I'm playing through yep. FF, uh, FF5 right now, casually, and then I just see Aethers for some ridiculous price, and then I cry. But yeah, I have to, like, generally, like, when you want to play this optimally, knowing the... Uh, oh, not these bastards. I hate you. That's good, Demons. They still suck. Yeah, they're, they're, they're gonna be basically no bueno for this entire dungeon. I don't want to see them, ever. Yeah, they don't really give that good of experience points. Um, unless we get an int boost... Uh, they are still arranged to kill with a uh, cast of Thundara, so you either really want to run or cast two. It's it's just awful. 
Yeah, they pretty much uh, can almost one hit your mages. That's rude. No, tech team! Oh! Why? Why would you do that? That's that's yep. so rude of them. Yeah, th this is how this game goes. Um, as we're going, the next major thing we're looking for is to get our fun little black mages up to level 15, where they will get their third level 5 charge, which means we'll have six casts of Fyraga for the next boss. Uh, which, spoiler, is the actual Fiend of the Earth, not the Vampire. The Vampire is just a chump. Yeah, it's, uh, the Vampire is just a little fun mini-boss. Uh, so the, the mage... The mage damage boost that like he was talking about, you can get it between like levels uh I think between like level 13 is like the earliest or something like that. Yeah, it's like between level 13 and I think you're guaranteed it by like 20 or 21. At least that was the case back in the GBA days. I don't know if the formula has changed. But the way that intelligence works in this game is Basically, every 10 points of intelligence you have, you get an additional multiplier on your spell damage. So our Black Mages start with 20 intelligence, which means they are doing double damage compared to someone with 10 intelligence. Uh, Shoutouts to Red Mages, this is how they nerf them. So as you go, FF1 gives you random stat boosts and fixed stat boosts at predetermined levels. So if we get lucky and our black mages, one of our black mages gets a high roll on some of those int boosts, they can get to that 30 HP, 30 int threshold early enough that it's actually going to be relevant for Lich. Yeah, and Lich is also just all, pretty much the biggest uh, early game gatekeeper, or the last big early game gatekeeper. Yeah. Because if you don't have a good amount of HP to survive, like, at least Dundara, you're just going to be suffering. Yeah, Lich is the first Fiend of the Elements will fight the four major bosses who are, you know, causing corruption throughout the land, draining the crystals of their power and using the power of the elements for themselves. You know, shoutouts to seeing chaos here. Uh, I will explain that joke later. I feel sorry for those four goblins. I, I didn't mean to Thundara them. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Lich is the first one we're going to fight, has 1200 HP, and is a spellcaster, which means that despite having the front row petrified, doesn't necessarily matter when you're getting hit with full party target AoE magic. No, stop! Alright, All right, so these lesser tech is really nice because they give us a uh, small chance of getting the next potion, and I'm a very happy camper if I get the next potion. Sad. Very unfortunate. Ooh. I'm choosing a tent out here early since uh, they tried to, you know, they tried to, uh, they, they tried to knock down Edgy. That's, that's, it's very rude of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, X potion as an item, very simple. Heals one party member up to maximum health. And that's actually like a really crucial item for the fight or for our fight with chaos because it's a it's an interesting fight, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we'll talk about that once we start getting uh, much deeper into the run. For now, it's still the Black Mage show. Yeah, so the Black Mage, uh, what do you call them? The Shadow Money Money Maker Gang. Shadow Wizard Money Gang. Shadow Wizard Money Gang, there we go. Okay, I forgot I was out of Thundara's on tech team. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, th this sort of MP spell charge management is one of the things you have to pay attention to in this stage of the game. Luckily, we have enough ethers that it's not going to be that big of a deal, but if I'm doing attempts of this game, I will be sitting there and just, like, counting how many charges I have left on various levels as I go. Yeah, optimizing your menus is ideal, too, because, like, you see here, I'm just gonna... just gonna take the time to, uh, use a little bit of ethers, because why not? Mm-hmm. I don't know why I did that, but sure. I can kill those for XP, but... 
I generally like to see groups of three or more mobs. Yeah, like the the big question here, uh, at least for me when I'm deciding about whether or not I want to take a fight or run from it, is does it go down in one spell cast, and how much experience points do I get from it? Yeah, for example, these even though they're not they're not efficient, I personally just like to kill them for insurance, and I don't want I don't want to see them on the screen. Basically. Yep. So, like, if I was in a very bad spot, like speed run wise, I would just, uh, I would, ju I would just, uh, just take the yellow and try to run. But yeah, we hit the level fifteen yeah. really early, so uh, which is actually pretty good. Yeah, we've been taking it uh, very conservatively through a uh, lot of this, making sure that we get all the experience we can by taking as many fights as we can. Yeah, we still have, like, a little bit more to go, so I'm just pretty much auto-battling them and hitting for mm -hmm. Augas. And since we're good enough on resources, we can afford to just throw out Fyragas like it's candy. Yeah, I just, um, yeah, especially, like, when... In an actual, like, run, you definitely will not have as many, like, ethers unless you got incredibly lucky. That's rude. Yeah. And then the other thing to consider is just um, if the closer we get to level 16 before we get to our next town, Crescent Lake, the better, because that's when we get our first level six charge. Yeah, we should not easily be able to hit level 16 since I've just been taking like almost every encounter. That's been decent. Mm -hmm. I did see here ta Twitch chat and Leggy taking, uh, you know, being the rocks, literally, for our, uh, our support team. Aw, yeah. Yeah, I still have, I'm still, like, really good on supplies since uh, I got way more money. So I can afford to be, like, extremely aggressive and just sit here and press for Aga. Mm -hmm. I'm, I don't know. I, I didn't pay attention if we uh, got the damage boost, so I'm already committed to Faragreen, so whatever. That's fine. But it would be nice if we got a Faraga going. Or, I mean, uh, the damage boost. Okay. I'm yeah. I forget what the exact odds are of getting it by 15 or 16. I'm sure someone's ran that math before. But, unfortunately, it tends to be more rare than not. Ambushed. That's rude. Yeah, I like to flee from single and double encounters just because the turns, like, are much faster. Uh... And alright, we get to play our final little lotto for now. So, I, so, both of our mages hit 16, I believe, so I'm not sure if we have the damage boost, that'd be really nice, but if not, it's very likely we need four turns. Big money, no whammies. Alright, money mages, let's go! Okay, neither of them. Rude. Neither of them have the it damage boost. It is worth boost. noting, though it is uncommon to see it, Lich does have Stun Touch, so if he melees one of the Black Mages, they can become uh, pet paralyzed for the turn. I've seen that happen uh, before, and that was uh, not a great experience, but I've all... Sure, why not? That kills kill. It's okay, tech team, you took one for the team.
So that was a pretty smooth uh, lift segment. And then now we're pretty much cruising up into for another like 30, 40 minutes or so. I gotta bring back a Twitch team here. I'm gonna refill everyone's MP bell slots here, and then we are pretty much uh, pretty much cruising. And the nice thing, the especially nice thing, is that we'll have Dundaga ready to go. Oh, I forgot I still had a tent. Whatever, it's fine. So after Ice Cave, like I'll probably be paying more attention to Twitch chat's uh, HP, and if it's like under 300, I'm going to cry, but... Well, we can still pretty much, uh... We can pretty much just like roll with almost anything. It's just more RNG, but that's what chat likes, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, who doesn't love to watch people roll the dice? Our Buccaneers are nice because more money. I feel next menu I need to do. Uh, I need to unequip the. I need to unequip the. Uh, my warrior. But hey, I'm gonna say the the pixel remastered music in general. Really good. Mm -hmm. Like, they outdid themselves, because I was listening to the FF6 one, and I was like, oh my god, that's actually, like, really good. Yeah, no, like... I am just thoroughly blown away by how good all of the remixes for the Pixel Remasters are. No, I want a quick save. I've died here before, so that's why I personally quick say before. You never know what can happen. Yeah, I don't want to talk about the PB pace I was run on where I died on my way out of Ice Cave on the last encounter of the river system. Oh no. It was cursed as hell. Yeah, even though your mages are just generally like the least likely to get hit, there's always going to be that time where. You know, the, the the friendly neighborhood monsters just, uh, they're, they're out for revenge. Yep. Uh, so here we're in Crescent Lake. Uh, we're going to do a bit more shopping, stock up on supplies after selling off all this extra stuff we don't need. It's fighter gear. Uh, but we do need to save 26,000 gil at the end of this menu uh, in order to buy our next spell that we're going to be using to carry us through the next section of the game. I can count. I can count. Yeah. Honestly, the hardest part of the run is that right there, because you have to do math. Right, now we are Dundaga havers. I sold the tent there because mm -hmm. I don't need it anymore. Yeah. Like, like previously mentioned, we're so flush on consumable supplies that, you know, tents are, tents are slow, they don't work inside dungeons, might as well just flip them for cash. We get a canoe, uh, the Circle of Sages here is like, hey, you took out, you know, uh, the Lich, cool. Can you handle the Fiend of Fire who's waking up in the volcano over here? And we're like, nah. Yeah, we, we've got side cuts, we'll, we'll do it later. We're procrastinators. I'll understand. Mm hmm. Yeah, but from here on, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot more relaxing. It's still slightly scary, but yeah, the the river system that we're going to come up to does have some encounters that are very punchy. And if there's one thing black mages do not like, it's getting punched in the face. Or uh, I, I um, should also say chomp chomp. Oh, true. Shoutouts to the crocodiles. Uh, one of the things that happened in this game, and I think in a previous one, is they... In the original NES version, the river system down here in the south had a different set of encounters than the river system up on the northern continents. Here, 
the river systems all have the same encounter pool, and it's the scarier one, because of course it is. Yeah, those, uh, are, are the friendly neighborhood crocodiles just won't hit your mages for a good while, unless, uh, you got really lucky with the damage boost, or with the HP boost. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, once we do get that, uh, intelligence threshold met, uh, we will start being able to one-shot encounters here on the river with Thundaga, but until then, you do need to supplement it with Thundara's. It's funny you can see trolls here, and then you see like the low, low level goblins, and you're just like, okay. Or goblins. Mm hmm. So technically, you can skip, also skip most encounters here, but the dangerous ones are the dragons, because uh, even though they give you really good XP and money, because uh, they pretty much uh, can ruin your day if you're not above uh, 100 HP. Mm hmm. And we still have our friendly neighborhood P Pisco Demons. But thankfully when we get our damage boost, uh, life's gonna be much better. Yep. But, welcome to Ice Cave. Um, Ice Cave is less bad than Marsh Cave, but that is damning this cave with faint praise. Yeah, the more stakes in here are the the wizards who uh can cast uh goss spells like the third tier spells, and then they just they just ruin your life. Also, I hate I don't like these ice gigas because they take two hits of Faraga, and they're very mean. Yeah, if the, if they're joined by a pack of wolves, they can be okay to take, but solo ice gigas is just like not worth it. Okay, yeah, she's level 18. I, I don't know. I, I, I literally, like, I press it. I go through it so fast, I don't know if I'm at the damage threshold. I just know it when I see it in battle, pretty much. Yep. Okay, that's a damage like, threshold. Y yeah. Like, you start to see, like, oh, oh, that did way more damage. It's a good feeling when you get it during, uh, like the Ford Lich. You're just like, yes. Mm -hmm. Life is good. Walk through here. But yeah, here in Ice Cave, there's a couple of different things you can choose to do. Um, down and to the left on this floor, there is a room with a six pack of money uh, that you can pick up if you're uh, worried about being low on cash. Upstairs here, there is a chest with 10,000 gold in it, as well as the drop down for the Blitter Stone, which is the whole reason we're here to begin with. Uh, all the way to the Blitter Stone, there's also a couple of things we can pick up that we're going to, uh, including a no, ice she. shield to sell. No! I left that she at And Etchy's corpse. I left Etchy at one HP <laughs> and I got my just desserts. Sorry, Etchy. This is so sad. You need to take better care of Etchy. Sorry. Alright, so I get a little mini yep. boss here that uh no one cares about. I wish we still cared about this. Uh, so in a lot of other versions of this uh, game, every other version of this game, you can refight this evil eye a whole bunch. And in fact, in several runs, you grind here to get your levels for the end game. Um, but because the evil eye is not on a floor tile, but instead is tied to the floater stone sprite, you can't refight it. You you can only fight it once, which is why in this game we do a lot of random encounter taking because we don't have these grind spots that we used to from previous versions. Uh, so we're just kind of blasting things as we go. Alright, that should be fine. 
I can just Faraga from here on. No, not the wizards. And yeah, these guys are jerks. Uh, they have some really nasty spells they can pull out, including a Faraga of their own. Yeah, that I, I think it's a low chance for them to do a Gauss spell, because a lot of times they just uh, do something silly. Yeah. Thank goodness for that. Um, I believe Fyraga is traditionally their first spell on their spell list, which means that they are typically just like a uh, panic basket moment. Yeah, those uh, wizards have ended my poor team's life before. Just at a yep. drop of a hat and then you're just like, okay, I'm sorry. And they'll do it again. The nice thing about it, even so now my Faragas can one hit these Minotaurs. Otherwise, they're pretty annoying. Yep. And we'll be able to clean up encounters here on the river system. Uh, eat their here. And so uh, I can get. I have a couple Dundaga cast. Hopefully, uh, the friendly neighborhood crocs will be nice. Mm hmm. Yeah. You might be able to one-shot them, but they will still hit, like, absolute... Well, they're crocs. They, they just go chomp-chomp. Uh, we are not Florida men here. Yeah, we, we're black mages in the world of, uh... In this world, we're not, uh... Oh, okay. <laughs> Revenge. <laughs> that quickly. Shows up, kills Echi, says nothing, and leaves. That, that's a mood, I guess. And yeah, the DDC encounters are still, like, really easy, but this, this is the last batch of C encounters we're getting, so... And, because after this, uh, we'll be... Uh, We'll be grabbing our friendly neighborhood airship. And then after that, uh, we'll, we'll let Twitch chat uh, vibe as a rock for a bit. Don't worry, Twitch chat, you'll be getting your just dessert soon. Yeah. On the other hand, I'm done for the day. I gotta go home now. Wait, I am at, um, huh. Hmm. Let me try that joke again. <laughs> it's okay, you got time. Yeah, time to cook up a, a nice little meme as this mm -hmm. airship goes up. So yes, yeah, so it's uh you know, Twitch chat needs a little break. So that they can work a little harder for the second half, so I think this is a good time to call for a friendly neighborhood little break. Yes, yeah, sounds good. Uh, just whenever you want to count it down, go ahead and do that. Uh, okay. I already did the quick save so we can stop whenever, okay. pretty much. All right, pause. <laughs> Freeze. Um, cool. So we'll uh, we'll do some airship adventures when we all return. We're gonna take a quick little break here, like Stanjan said, give everyone a chance to stretch, get some water, use the bathroom, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Before we do that, I just want to remind everyone that registration for AGDQ Awesome Games Done Quick 2024 is live. If you'd like to attend the event in person from January 14th to the 21st, go to gamesdonequick.com for more info, including attendee registration, and hotel booking. Be sure to check out the schedule at gamesdonequick.com/schedule, and uh, we look forward to either seeing you there or watching live on Twitch throughout the event. Um, and then also Frame Fatales has their next event, Frost Fatales, coming up March 3rd through the 10th of next year. Uh, Frost Fatales 2024 run submissions and studio applications are now open for all women slash femmes in the speedrunning community. Use exclamation point FF in Twitch chat or go to gamesunquick.com slash Frame Fatales for more info. And those submissions are due November 19th. So yeah, grab some snacks, do what you gotta do. We'll see you in a few minutes. Hello and welcome back everybody to the GDQ Hotfix. We are in the middle of a one-off special here of Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster, 90% Glitchless by Sanjan. 
Uh, before we get back into the run, I want to remind everyone that uh, if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to press the like button on this video and subscribe to the channel. Also go to twitch.tv slash games done quick to watch our shows live. And if you're watching here on Twitch, hi. Uh, if you missed any of our other Hot Fix shows, like the one right before this, or any of the other ones this week, or all the ones before that, or before that, before that, uh, or the future ones, I guess, before they, or after they happen, uh, but you can check out the VODs over at youtube.com slash games done quick. Um, let's do some, let's do some airship action, Sanja. All right, so without further ado, uh, we're, we're going to go on our merry airship adventures in three, two, one, go. All right. All right, so now we can fly around the world. We. Uh, first place we're going to go. We got go some chores to do along the way, though. It's to grab a cube. Unfortunately, we can't land in the forest because uh, this game does have uh, standards. Oh, I hate this encounter. Yep, and despite coming out of the sand, the airship must land on dirt, which I think is just one of the rudest things. And this encounters a lot of XP, but any of these little little homies can one hit you pretty much. Nice cottage. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the free money. Yeah. The Shadow Wizard money gang or er, Shadow Wizard money gang. But yeah, thankfully this place isn't way too dangerous, but I've had some hilarious things happen and yeah hilarious there, i mean i've died before getting the cube yeah there's a few particularly nasty things to watch out for here in the waterfall cave uh first and foremost is pyrolists do have death dot uh, a stone touch just like their toxic scatter parts they also have a death spell that they can just cast and just one shot someone uh, mummies can put you to sleep and of course, there are gas dragons lurking around, which, if they hit you with their big AoE gas attack, it does not end well. Yeah, I mean, those, uh, yeah, those, yeah, the green dragons ended my career, or ended, uh, the streamer career pretty, pretty quick, unfortunately. Last, on one of my PB attempts. That's rude. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. That's fine. Well, this is a required fight that we have to take out before talking to the robot back here. We're also going to just open up all those boxes at the back because there's a bunch of things that are worth money and one very, very important piece of gear. Yeah, funny enough, uh, the ribbon is the most important piece of gear. Not only does it make you immune to almost all the statuses, it also halves magic damage by a half. Yep, it basically gives you elemental resistances to every single element. Uh, there are a few exceptions, uh, examples of non-elemental uh, spells and effects of the game, namely nuke and nuclear, uh, though we won't see the latter. Unless we get really, really hyped. Fun fact, in one of my PV attempts, I forgot one of the ribbons, and thankfully one of my mages has high enough HP that they were okay without it, but it is very sketchy to not have, uh, mm -hmm. ribbons. But yeah, these pirate lists are much less dangerous of one person with ribbon, but still can be, can go bad, as, as this game in general. These can turn nice from from nice to really bad in an instant. Yeah, this game does have a tendency to just summon rudeness out of nowhere. And you're like, um, excuse me? And the game's like, deal with it. Yeah, they're just basically they're just like out of the blue. We're, we're stealing your lunch money. Deal with it. Oh, that's not ideal that I have to cast two Dundaras. It's okay. They won't troll me. Surely they won't. Yeah, of course not. No one has ever been trolled in Final Fantasy 1 Pixel Remaster once, ever. It's unheard of, it's impossible. Yeah, my head can my head cannon does not allow for it. Yeah, 
Yeah, Thundog has taken care of that encounter nicely, especially with the damage boost. Before it was like a really scary encounter to get. Mm hmm. Wow, thanks for poisoning Etchy. That's really nice of you. But yeah, hopefully we'll have enough money, but the way I personally have a plan is that if I don't have enough money, then I just basically have to... Then I just basically have to, uh... Or have to live with it. Yep. Or, like, take an uh, additional that... menu. Yeah, but now that we're out of Waterfall Cave, we're gonna pop over here to the Desert Caravan, who has a fairy in a bottle for sale. And we're going to be like, ah, oh, sweet. Fairy in a bottle. Uh, we're going to buy that bottle so we can free her. We're also going to pick up a few more drinks along the way. Three giant tonics, a couple of speed drinks. Uh, those will be useful much later on. But we'll talk about that when we get there. Yeah, I, <laughs> I have almost accidentally used those items before when I should not have them. And if I have to go back here, it's not a fun time. Mm -hmm. But also here, uh, we can the bottle fairy release into town. Uh, it's a fun time, yep. and then I'm pretty good on money, so I will buy a third protect bracelet. I think this means I can skip the armlet, but I think just for safety, I'll buy it anyways. Doesn't hurt. Yeah, so here in the town of Gaia, there's a couple of things we want to buy. Uh, the first and foremost is the Blizzaga spell, which uh, is... Ice magic, which we're finally picking up for the first time. We've skipped all previous instances of it. Um, it is also the best AoE spell we're going to be picking up. We're also going to be picking up some protect rings, which are... Uh, they go in the glove slot. They give you 8 defense and a resistance to death element magic. Uh, we can pick up gold bracelets, which are like the silver bracelets I was mentioning earlier. Go, They sit in your armor slot. And they just do the same thing, but better. And then finally, of course, we have the item shop, because every item shop in FF1 Pixel Remaster has the same set of items for some reason. Yeah, so I will take a sa safety uh, second, uh, a second uh, item shop at the end. Technically, mm -hmm. I don't need to, but I generally just like go very ham on potions. Yeah. For safety, so. It is better... To have them in your pocket and not need them than the other way around. Yeah, there's times that I've been through the final dungeon of like no supplies and it's 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 not a great time, I should say. Mm-hmm. And now we're gonna go back to the exact same area here and then go into town because now we can uh go uh underground or underwater. Yeah, now that the fairy has given us the Oxy Ale, which is a magical cola rock, it's not entirely clear. But whatever it is, it lets us breathe underwater by constantly producing air for us. A black mage wizard did it. I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, no, we had to go talk to the fairy to do it for us. Yeah. Um, but now we're going down to the Sunken Shrine, which is the second uh, fiend dungeon we're going to be dealing with. Here lies Kraken. Fiend of Water. Other things said in a dramatic tone. The good old D&D &D experience. Mm-hmm. Basically, we're really powerful now. And I hate these sharks because they don't die in one Thundaga. And yeah, they are I, really rude like that. Yeah, I, I will generally skip them, but for safety, I will not skip them off, so... It's not worth it to take this uh, encounter. But yeah, there's a couple of interesting encounters along the way here, including the aforementioned sharks. We have these water doggos that are mostly support casters. We have ghosts, which are very powerful physical attackers who are weak to fire. We have the seafood party platter on your screen right now. Um, which dies to either a Thundaga or a Blizzaga. Awesome. We have water elementals, which are weak to ice. No, stop bullying me, sharks. I don't deserve this. I, yeah, these 
Yeah, we like to see uh, trolls, uh, scorpions, and uh, snakes, but... And then I get sad whenever I see uh, sharks. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we gotta go pick up some stuff here. We grab this diamond armlet, which uh, reduces damage by quite a bit. I don't know the exact Yeah, stats. it is the single best piece of armor that a monk can wear. Take this time to eat their up. And then also on, on the way here, just gonna give the diamond armlet to uh, the tech team so that they can silk up pits. Mm hmm. Until we depetrify our monk. Or depetrify Twitch chat. And they have a big purpose. Yep. <laughs> Twitch chat is currently just hanging out and rocking. Yeah, that. that that HP doesn't look so really ideal, but hopefully uh, it'll increase. Yeah, like, that's not an ideal HP stat, but you've still got plenty of time uh, to get it to a point where it's going to be viable. I'm just fleeing from this. Understandable. Those water elementals, excuse me, hurt too. Yeah, on average, by the end game, we want to see uh, Twitch chat sitting around three to four hundred hit points. Uh, obviously, the higher the better. Yeah, the, around four hundred ten or so is when uh, you can survive uh, the big damage hit. Aside from the other big damage hit. Mm-hmm. But you're usually seeing things in that, like, 250 to 300 range in the end game is about what's typical. This is not a great ambush. Those scorpions really hurt. But quick Gundaga fixes all our problems. I should say in general, this carrot, this uh, speedrun in general just has so much variance because there's so many factors that go in, like you taking encounters. Yeah, this game does a very, very good job of keeping you on your toes as you go. But yeah, generally I will try, since uh, in the marathon setting, I will try to hit level 24, 25. Stop giving me these encounters. It's okay, chat. You'll have your time soon, I promise. Yep. Uh, once we get out of here is about when we start seeing the Black Mages fall off, because currently we're sweeping through a lot of these fights by exploiting enemies' elemental weaknesses. You know, the sharks are weak to lightning, the water elementals are weak to ice, the land lobsters are weak to fire, etc. Uh, but once we start getting more into the end game and end game bosses, we run into enemies that have the opposite a problem going on. They're resistant to gosh dang near everything. But in that case, we all know what beats that. That's right, it's punching. And Twitch chat has the power to punch away all the enemies that are very strong against mage attacks. So you, mm -hmm. don't worry, Twitch chat, you'll have your time. And in particular, that giant glove item we just picked up is going to be one of the cornerstones of the strategy that will let Twitch chat carry the day. Uh, the giant's glove is a caster item, which means if you use it in battle, it will cast a spell. And in particular, the spell it casts is Saber, which is temper, but better. Yeah, it's a better version of Temper. There's a little more details on it, which we'll go over a little bit later, but Temper uh, doesn't give you like an accuracy boost, but having uh, yeah. but having a uh, wow, uh, yeah, those those are hard. R rip Etchy again. Etchy's just taking taking L, but taking a lot of L's, I should say. <laughs> 
Look, if, if, if you get... If your name gets chosen for one of the Black Mages in this run, uh... There's a lot of L's. Uh, especially down here in the Sea Shrine where enemies hit hard and will punch you left, right, and center. I'll, you notice sort of themes throughout the various Fiend dungeons and what the enemies do. In the Earth Cave, there's a lot of poison, there's a lot of enemies that do some tricky things and then let you as a spellcaster. In Mirage Tower and in the Sky Cave, as I like to call it, you see Tiamat and you have enemies that have some really nasty skills, and Tiamat has some really nasty skills. Down here underwater, the Sea Shrine is basically the gym of the enemies. Uh, this is where enemies go to get swole and punch hard. That's the water type gym. Yeah, someone needs to make a edit of this that just replaces uh, Kraken with Water Urshifu. Because honestly, that's what it feels like. I see so many Urshifus. It's just like, they're... every time I see an Urshifu in Pokemon, especially the competitive ones, it's just like, oh, well, I'm seeing Kraken again, I guess. Yep. Hello, if this is uh, one sea troll. Thank you. Yeah, luckily the Kraken fight is fairly straightforward. 75% uh, of the time you don't get hit, so we're just hoping for that. Kraken can also use Ink, which inflicts the blind status, which lowers your ability to hit physical attacks. But again, we're not doing that. Yeah, I've actually died to Kraken because Kraken uh, decided to... Uh... You know, Kraken decided uh, it had or they had enough, and then uh, yeah. Just if Kraken the decides, if Kraken decides to give your mages hugs, it is a very bad time. If Kraken does not decide to give your mages hugs, this fight is literally free. I just need three sets of Dundagas, and it goes bye bye. Yep. If. Kraken decides to hug a mage a little later into the fight, uh, it becomes easy because you do have a few extra casts of Thundaga to play with. You can also spend a little bit of time to pick up the other mage if you really want to as a backup strat, uh, because Kraken doesn't really have any AoE damage to speak of. <laughs> Does this Kraken have Thundara? I know uh, the bigger no, buffer. No, it is just Kraken too. That's very interesting. I would expect them mm -hmm. to have that, but, uh, you know, I'll take that. Even though at that point, yeah. Thundara just does... Thundara is just kind of also, like, kind of a free win, I guess. Oop. Yeah, at, at that point, Thundara is just like, haha, that tickles. Uh, we're gonna stop here in the Cardia Isles. Uh, we're gonna pick up a few extra items. Uh, some runners do this earlier, some runners do it now. Uh, but importantly, we need to pick up an elixir. And an X potion because we need these full heal items to ensure that our monk survives to kill chaos. We are putting all of our resources on Twitch chat. <laughs> so that they can deliver us. Is to that w. wise? You know, I I think Twitch chat can do it. I believe in Twitch chat. I don't know about I don't know about you and Echi. I mean like I said, you know, my, my job is just to be here, hang out, you know, cool vibes, good times oh, yeah, only. My, my death rate does not inspire much confidence. Yeah, you're just here to be a vehicle for Twitch chat to carry the day. <laughs> hey, you're 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 going to be coming uh, HM friend soon. So it's OK. Let's go. Uh, that's what I've always wanted to be. <laughs> I love Bidoof. So we have to go through one more set of, a couple more set of side quests here. We gotta translate the Rosetta Stone here so that we can access some more areas. Nice pattern. Yep, gonna buy a silver armlet, just a little bit of extra armor. 
very useful because again, we're getting into the end game where things are going to start getting a little nasty. Uh, but we are going to stop into Elfland and finally, finally buy the most powerful spell in Final Fantasy One. Uh, for that, we got, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a safety strat and just uh, buy up the entire population of potions here. Mm-hmm. But yeah, now we're gonna go get the best spell. The good ol' yeah. haste. Haste. All it does is says uh whoever gets cast by this, every time they do their uh basic attack, they hit twice as many times. And you might might think of that and go like, huh, that doesn't sound very exciting. That doesn't sound very powerful. It is a buff spell that on its own doubles the amount of damage the target does. It is incredible. It is the reason Final Fantasy speedruns work. Yeah, we didn't have haste. Uh, we would have a very grand time, and grand time, I mean, Twitch chat would be suffering. No, we did not do any upgrades. There's no advanced shop upgrades since those are very slow. Yep. Uh, we do, as it turns out, Completing the Bound Ordeals DLC doesn't actually give us anything really useful. Um, and to answer the other question in chat, um, we you did not miss the grind. We are still grinding um, because there are no static tile encounters like there are in previous versions of FF1. We're just taking fights as we go to get our experience that way. And yeah, I know there's also a different school of thought between doing... Marlith and Tiamat first, but I, 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 ever since I had a bad encounter with uh, Mar doing Marlith early, I'm unfortunately in the Tiamat first club. However good or yeah. bad it is. Like, I don't think anyone's actually sat down and actually, like, timed out, like, how long it takes to get from point A to point B, and whether or not the overworld movement part of the routing is more efficient doing it one way or the other. Um... Again, it's all very vibes based. Yeah, if my mom uh, say she was like really, really, really bad if I were under leveled, that's when I would probably consider Marla first, but mm -hmm. a lot of times. Yeah, you but just you were to, at you just have the grit and bear, the good old the good old TMAT wheel of fortune. <laughs> but yeah, you're sitting at about 250 HP, which is about what I'm looking for uh going into the Tiamat fight, so I see no reason not to. Yeah. I actually personally don't like that HP just because, uh, for me, Tiamat has just been, you know, very mean to me. But, like, it's perfectly Oh, I'm not acceptable. saying it's, like, optimal. I'm saying yeah. it's bare minimum. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's generally, like, the bare minimum. Yeah. Like, if my if I don't think my monk's gonna hit 250 HP before Tiamat, I will often buy an extra Giant's Tonic just for safety. But yeah, but other than that, it's just like, I think uh, Marlith is a lot better if you buy two Blizzagas, but Blizzaga is just like really expensive. And you have a lot of money, but you don't have a, you don't have that much money. Yeah, especially like with all the looting in Ice Cave that has been cut out of the route. Uh, I, I do think like you can still do Marlith first. Um, you depetrify the monk right before you start the fight. And then you have the monk here uh, to either defend or help you run away from encounters. So there is a little bit of benefit to uh, going that way, but. All right, so now Twitch chat gets their time. Where's my gold needle? Uh, Ether. Alright, I have to be very careful not to accidentally use my, uh... My, er, my X potions too early because I've been there before. Mm -hmm. So the reason why I switch, uh... Switch chat and tech team around is that I want my mage at the highest amount of HP to start silking hits. Yep. As previously mentioned, that second slot gets hit 25% of the time. And the bottom two only get hit 12 and a half.
I'm just gonna sit up front and, you know, soak hits all day. Now you're vibing. Now Let's go, baby tank life! And welcome back, Butch Chat. Now you get to have your time. So, two, six, so I think I'll be. I think I'll get another level unless I get, like, really unlucky with encounters here. I'd, typically, I won't kill encounters here, but just for safety, I will. Yeah, like. It depends on the encounter. Like, some of these encounters are actually, you know, very good experience and will die in a hit, uh, such as that one. Yeah, the black flans are, are, are good to get. Yeah, Earth Medusa's, you know, can go down easily. Um, I think the funniest thing that's ever happened to me in one of these runs is uh, doing Merilith first. I occasionally will depetrify the I'll depetrify the monk going into that fight, and then on my way up here, I got the monk repetrified again right oh, before I was about no. to get the ribbon. It was hilarious. Yay! Wow, I actually got his big, uh... Big HP boost. Mm hmm. I might have. I think depending on, uh, I probably probably have to switch him to the front. Which I guess wouldn't matter anyways if Tiamat's just gonna be mean, but hopefully Tiamat won't be rude to the Twitch team. Yeah, so, uh, Tiamat has a couple of different things she can do. Um, she can either, uh, bite you with her six heads. Uh, this does a lot of damage, as one might expect. Uh, but she can also use the AoE breath weapons that all of the other dragons in this game know, because, you know, Queen of the Dragons and all that. Um, and in fact, those AoE breath attacks will still probably three-shot any single character here, two-shot most of the Black Mages. So, I'll just Borzaga these. A lot of the times here on Tiamat 1, you're really just hoping that the fighter is getting punched repeatedly. Um, otherwise, the goal is to buff up the monk as much as you can and maybe throw a few safety high potions over the course of the fight so that the monk can survive the 150 ish damage AoEs that are coming out. Yeah. Basically, Twitch chat, uh, here's your first test. This will be graded. Yeah. Sadly, we failed to provide sufficient hype for Warbeck, so Warbeck is not showing up. Okay. And Tiamat has 2400 HP, which is, like, definitely really high on, like, the first bit. Generally, since uh, mm -hmm. everyone lived, I won't go for a second, uh, Giant's Club, and I will just, uh, start attacking. Yeah, Tiamat being very generous and not hitting us with any of the AoE magic. Why do I say words? I'm gonna high potion just for safety. All right, well, Boom. congratulations, Twitch Chat. Uh, you're doing good so far. <coughs> you passed your first test. And there, but there's going to be a lot more difficult tests coming up. Thankfully, though, this next one's not very difficult. Uh, you get a little break from your hard work of being uh, encased in rock. And honestly, my mage HP is looking pretty good right now. Like, it's not too bad. Like, ideally, they'd be around like 300 by end game, but this is like. Uh, Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Whatever. Um, it is worth noting that in chat right now... Hey, you ready to start gambling? Uh, we've got a prediction open for how many tries Chaos is going to take. Uh, get your votes in now. We're go we've still got a little bit of- still got a little bit of ways to go before we get there, but... It's going to be a time. Uh. 
It's gonna be a great casino time. And Who's even... ready to roll those dice? Yeah, get your pop, get your me, 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 me. get your popcorn out. <laughs> As the host, am I allowed to gamble? Is that is that allowed? I mean, you don't have any control over the outcome. I don't see why yeah, not. Yeah, I've you already thrown it. Nobody tell on me, okay? And then I'll do it. You should. <laughs> Uh, so the the interesting thing about these uh, lava tiles is that they they don't uh, they'll still count towards the steps encounter wise, but you can't get encounters on those things. So it's kind of like a skill to whether or not like you get through this without getting the least amount of encounters. Yep. Um, in previous versions, they would just not add to your steps towards your next encounter at all, but here. You just want to try and get to that point where you would be getting an encounter, then walk in as much lava as you can to push that encounter back as far as possible. All right, everyone's at really low HP just for safety. I'll do this. Yeah. It is worth noting that walking on the tiles does do damage as you walk over them, so... It is important to stay healed up. Definitely don't be like me and forget to heal up and run into a pack of encounters that do just, you know, a very weak AoE. Yeah, that was not my finest moment in speedrunning. Especially when your your group like can't flee for some reason and then you're just like, okay, I I, re I regret my life decisions type of deal. Yep. All right, so here's... But yeah, it's Meryleth time. Yeah, and there's not much to say about her. She only has, like, 1350 or something HP. Uh, we just showed... 1440. 1440. We kind of delay her for a long time, I think because it's just not efficient to go for her. Yeah, she resists all three of the standard black magic elements, fire, ice, and lightning. She's weak to status element, but none of the status element spells are actually any good. No, I don't want to flee from this encounter. What the heck? Yeah, I've had a run uh, in here before where, like, she stunned my mages, and, or stunned my monk, and I had to kill a Blizzaga and Thundaga, and it was a, it was a time. Yeah. Like, you can take her out with six Blizzaga casts, but honestly, I think at this point it is just strictly faster to buff up the monk and go whether you're doing her first or second. Pixel Remaster auto saves every floor transition, and I think, like, big events, like getting the airship. I know this because I died a little bit after getting the airship, and the auto save took me back to there. Mm -hmm. All but right. yeah, uh, four fiends down, uh, five more bosses to go. And now we're going to make our way to uh, the final dungeon. Which is a great place the to chaos be. The Shrine. Or should I call it the Gamba Shrine? I think that's just called a casino. That's also true. It's the... It's the casino... Of excitement. Uh, so I think plot-wise, basically, uh, something about, like, there being some kind of... Time... Dimension thing, blah, blah, and every 2,000 years, bad... Of TM happens, and now we're here to stop it once and for all. Yeah, so to offer the actual summary, uh, the way that this works is when we defeated Garland, uh, the fiend, the four fiends dragged him 2,000 years back into the past where he gets reborn as Chaos. He then sends the fiends 2,000 years in the future to, to wreak havoc on our world and force us to fight him in the present to send him back. It's a weird self-fulfilling time loop prophecy, but by going back those 2,000 years and fighting Chaos and the Four Fiends at their full strength, we have the ability to break the cycle and save the world. It's like a self-fulfilling self-insert prophecy. Yeah. But yeah, these, also these enemies just give you really good XP, so 
It's a nice place mm-hmm. to grind too, but we need a minimum of level 30. But since I've been taking pretty much almost all the encounters I can take, it's likely it will be like 31, 32 at the yeah. end. Like getting that, getting your levels up as high as possible, uh, getting your monk as close to 399 hit points as you can, or going over. Uh, I have actually seen a run of this where the runner wasn't even deliberately trying to grind overly much and had a 500 HP monk. It was absolutely mind-boggling. That's the power of the good old RNG... Or RNG, uh... What do you call it? Stat distribution, whatever. IV... uh, That monk had good IVs in Pokemon terms. Exactly, exactly. Um, that's the evil eye. Uh, very resistant to physical attacks. Two Firagas take it out. You get one gold and one XP for your troubles. It's kind of silly. I am also going to say the time's pretty much like wildly berry, which is also why we have a very high time estimate. Yeah. Uh, world record is... God, it's, it's still it's like the 146, it's high, right? It's a high 141. Okay, it's a 141. So yeah, uh, world record is uh, now. <laughs> yeah, this is world record pace. Just kidding. Yeah. Uh, but obviously our estimate is a little bit higher than that because, again, the amount, sheer amount of variance in this game means that hitting that world record pace is going to be a bit spicy. I basically would have spent time resetting early game because, like, especially at my at my uh, times now, like, I have to, like, start doing really, really risky stuff. And mm-hmm. obviously because marathon setting, we are not doing that, so we are having fun. Yeah. One of these days I need to get back to grinding it. My section basically between Lich and Crack in, in my PB is so bad, I can save an easy five minutes there. Just for free. There, yeah, there's just also, so much variance in this game in general. I'll, I'll, for those of you who are not in the know, are we're the war, the poor warriors staying petrified because we want our we want Leggy to uh, take one for the team and so kids because for every physical hit that goes into a petrified character they don't take damage so they're basically soaking hits mm-hmm. and taking one for the team and it's because of uh, because of mechanics where like the fa- the top t- slot is more favorable to get attacked. There. Yeah, so f- so fifty percent of the time, uh, we're not taking any damage from single target attacks. I think I think I'll hit like level thirty two or something. I've just been basically taking every encounter because why not? But that's okay. They get to see the Shadow Woods and Money Gang at it. They're, the sprites are honestly so cute. They're like little hat wearing mages that will bring about uh, destruction upon uh, upon foes. Now, Twitch Chat's HP is honestly fine at the bare minimum, but again, I would like to see uh, 400 or so, but it's not a big deal. But yeah, coming up here uh, is our first refight, which is our friendly neighborhood Lich. It's gonna refill everyone's HP and then do a quick save, and I'm just going to hope that our friendly neighborhood Lich here doesn't that's uh, Flare because Flare deals like 200, 400 damage and that's an instant kill on our team because everyone's low HP. That's fine. That's a little rude, but that's fine. But yeah, if you like that uh, pattern of play where we're just going to stack monks on staff buffs on the monk, get Twitch chat as swole as possible through magical means. Uh, that's basically how we're going to get through the rest of the game. Oh, Lich is out to get the tech team. Sheesh. 
Look, look, Lunch could do a lot worse than yeah. punch the tech team. Yeah, I, I'll take that as a very good fight. I'll yeah, a any... Any time you fight Lich 2 and you don't see Nuke come out, you are super happy. Actually, it took me until like a couple of playthroughs to figure out that I think Tider the Knights are the unicorns do uh do flare, and that also hurts. Mm hmm. It's the knights that uh cast uh flare. Oh, I see. Also, fun fact though, I think these. Like these uh, floors are also themed based on the boss, so like you're you're gonna mostly Correct. see uh ice weak enemies, which means I just go AFK and press Blizzaga. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I didn't each... mean to do that. Oh well, whatever. Oh no. It's fine. First try. Okay. It's not a big deal yeah, anyways just... because we have auto saves. Yep. So it'll just take us back to the top of the floor. Unfortunately, Marilith is like, oh, I see your haste caster. Bonk! Uh, luckily, we do pick up two copies of it, though there are routes that try to pick up haste early, so in those routes, you will only have one haste caster, and at that point, you're just panicking. Yeah, I think they do it in exchange for no more visits to Elfheim, which is fine. Yeah, like, it, the, the, the pros and cons, pros and cons. It's a little bit riskier, but in really? exchange, oh, the monk goes down. All right. Probably gonna be the first wipe of the run. No, I believe we got Blizzaga. Okay, it's 100 HP. Oh my left. god. That, that's funny. I was not counting damage. I I am so happy for you right now. Holy oh, hell. That, that was a little scary. That funny enough, that was also gold somehow. Amazing. That, well, I mean you saved the time for not saving. Yeah, pretty much. That, that was extremely rude of uh her. To just gun for right. us. And so, as theme, this is the Kraken floor, which means we get lots of sharkies, and because I don't feel like uh, pressing the flea button, uh, I'm just gonna press auto battle and press Thundaga. I, no, the monk's fine. I mean, ideally, I would want the monk to gain a little bit of XP, but it's not. It's not a whole lot of XP from those encounters. But yeah, Tech, tech Team, uh, shoutouts for being clutch there. No, Fallen Allies did not get XP. I actually sometimes, mm -hmm. in the natural PB run, will use it to my advantage because early game, I don't mind, uh... I don't mind, uh, my Monk or Warrior dying. Yeah. And one of the nice things about uh, the way that this game handles experience distribution is if that if a character is dead, your party still gains the same total amount of experience. It's just divided three ways as opposed to four ways. So if the fighter or the monk die early, uh, you can basically just see that as redistributing the experience points onto the black mages who do in fact really need it in that early game. And you'll make up more than enough of the XP you lost on the character who is dead by the time you get to this point in the end game if it's the monk. Yeah, Kraken still has ink and all that stuff, but Kraken was also very mean and bopped Twitch team or the tech team. Yeah, Kraken. We'll reach out and hug you. Should be good as long as I don't get bopped. There we go. Yep. Ideally, we want to see Kraken uh, spamming Ink and Thundara because neither of those are really going to do much to us. Uh, but if Kraken has to hug anyone uh, who's not a statue, go going for a Black Mage is not the worst thing in the world. I don't know what these Purple Worms are weak to, but they have a lot of HP and I hate it. <laughs> Uh, they aren't weak to anything, actually. They're just very beefy, and they take neutral damage from everything. I just flee from them a lot of times, because I, yeah. I don't have the patience to sit there and kill them. They are the single highest experience point enemy in the game not named Wormek. Oh, that's good to know. Unfortunately, I still, still run from them. Yeah, so if you're... 
if, if we were at a point where you were like feeling a little uncertain about your experience, that would have been a really good pickup. You probably would have gotten a level and a half off of it. Yeah. But, you know, we're at a very good experience threshold. Your monk's HP is actually pretty okay. It's, yeah, it's plenty workable. Mm hmm. No, Etchy. No, tech team. That's okay. Twitch chatter. Yeah. Carry. Look, all, at this point, for all of these boss fights, there's only one thing that matters, and that is Twitch chat. Yep. Twitch or, chat, we are putting all of, of our eggs in the basket of you. I believe in you, Twitch chat. Ow. We have no other choice. It's actually the lowest HP I've taken on uh, for chaos, but it's mm -hmm. okay. Chaos yeah. just simply won't be mean. That's that. That's the name of the game. The, the casino will. The casino will. Uh, will allow Twitch chat to claim victory. Yeah, yeah. Like, do you really think Chaos would be here to stop Twitch chat? Like, Twitch chat is a living embodiment of Chaos. Oh shit, I didn't mean to- I should swap the uh, Twitch chat to the last slot, but it's- I'll do that uh, if I die. Oh, that's rude. Yeah. Uh, what? Why swap Twitch chat to the last slot? Uh, just so that the monk doesn't get hit. It's already- It doesn't actually- It doesn't actually matter, the last two slots have the same probability. Oh, I see. I just do it for good RNG, but yeah, so basically, mm -hmm. uh... We Giants Tonic are uh, Monk here so that uh, they can reach over yeah. 900 HP. Yeah, annoyingly, Chaos has cast Haste and you have not. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to use those uh, things, but I'll think about it later. Honestly, like I would take a death here because I hate the position I'm in. I'm on already. Yeah. Yeah, this is. Not the best uh, chaos fight. If you had haste up here, I would say this is a really good position. But not having haste means that this is actually kind of scary. Um, and chaos having haste up, uh, the HP cap for the light warriors is 999. Uh, Chaos's physicals, I've seen hit for upwards of 1200. Yeah, I'm gonna so... save her one more time and then see what it is. But. Mm hmm. Hey, can you stop? Oh, I got stun. Oh, yeah. Wait. He has a stun touch. <laughs> Wait, I got out of stun. What is going on here? Well, I didn't notice I got out of it. Uh, okay, sure. I'm just going to have to go. Yeah, that should be fine. By the way, t for those of you who don't know, time is when we kill chaos, but we'll see from here. Yeah, yeah. that's not we're great doing, HP, we're... but I just have to go. I don't, I don't have a choice. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're doing decent damage. That... Uh, hit is not great. That misses perfect. Uh, oh, that's gonna be four more rounds. This is prob Earthquake is great to see. Earthquake right, is an in uh, insta kill. Alright, well, that was a good try. Yeah. That, that was Chaos tried to throw. Yeah. That was okay because, like, I was in a bit, like, I basically wouldn't need to pull a miracle there to win. Or Chaos would just basically have to, like, massively throw. But this kid. Yeah. Uh Honestly, if Chaos didn't punch you that last time, I think you probably have this. Yeah. Like, I start off on, like, a very bad position, and generally, like, to live that long is something, but it takes more time. But this is why we have a 215 estimate. Mm -hmm. And this is why the casino yep. is an entertaining place to be. And this is why this is also a great run to uh, do as a race, because, you know... Stop bullying tech team! Oh, that's, uh... Yeah, this might be another reset. Yeah. Yep. Washed away. It's okay, Twitch chat. I still believe in you. The Chaos just, you know... Chaos just wants to steal your lunch money over and over again. It, 
You know, hopefully, I, I mean, I feel like Chaos just like got X out of six on the Wordle, and it's just like I'm just gonna take it out on Twitch chat. <laughs> Uh, God, I haven't played Wordle in, like, years now. Alright, perfect. Alright, that's a, that's a start. So, the Giant's Gloves, so there's, like, a point booster for, like, Tempest and Giant's Gloves. I ideally want around, like, 90 to, like, 120, like, attack boost-wise. And so, like, I basically have to, like, count the amount of times I use it. Yep. Luckily, all temper casts count the same, all Giant's Gloves count a different, but same, val same value as every other Giant's Glove cast. Yeah, the longer my mages live, the more, like, easier it is just to take stuff. And I see uh, mm -hmm. our friendly neighborhood chaos is, you know... Oh, that rip. Yeah, that was incredibly generous. Yeah, that was really generous. Um, uh, just... You know, I'm just here getting, you know, beat to heck and chaos is, you know, completely ignoring Twitch chat, which is honestly really what you want to see. Hitting for 4,000, 3,000, 3,000, chaos is half dead. There's gonna, another 35. I'm save the early elixir here, and so uh, yeah. we're on really good pacing. The only bad thing mm -hmm. is if uh, I get hit a haste into, like, an attack... So two, I think yep. two or three, two more hits. Time. Time. GG. That was third try, I think. Yeah. Uh, it was sub two. I, yeah, third try. I voted sub thir two. two to three tries. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, two to three try believers. Uh, rise up. Rise up. <laughs> Well, awesome. Sanjin, that was a wonderful run. Thank you so, so much. Um, thank you for defeating Chaos. You have saved the world and severed the time loop. Um, any uh, any shout-outs you both want to do? Uh, so I'd like to give a special shout-out to Leggy for pretty much giving me all the resources I need to learn this run and uh, answering my questions about this run. Like, I picked this up, this run up like a month ago. I wasn't expecting to run this uh at an event so soon, but here I am. But Leggy has been very helpful in my questions. Uh, I know that some of the members of the FF community have come in to like support me as well, so shout out to them as well. Cool people. Uh, thanks, Etchy, for hosting this, and Etchy and the tech team for being good mages. I'm sorry <laughs> they bullied you, but it, it was uh, needed. And Leggy for also taking hits, and you, Twitch chat, for winning <laughs> us the, the speed run. Y'all yeah. came together and delivered a W. This is this is our PB Twitch chat. This, this is the Twitch <laughs> chat PB moment. <laughs> and of course, I just want to make a quick shout out to Demarine, uh, my wonderful partner, uh, who is you know my go-to for just any sort of event I'm a part of. We've done so many. Uh, Final Fantasy 1 things together um, and also was there while I was at work answering Sanjin's questions. <laughs> um, want to give a shout out to Sanjin for inviting me here. You know, always a blast to hang out with you. Uh, and thank you to uh, GDQ and Hotfix and Etchy and the GDQ tech team and just everyone involved. This was a blast. Yeah, thanks for commenting. Like this is like they're they're like because I picked this up really early. I just mainly know like what to get me through the run, and thankfully Leggy knows pretty much like all the little inner details. It'll take me time to learn all that, but that's okay. <laughs> well, thank you both very very much. Sub two, pretty good for a, for a marathon run. Very exciting, um, and uh, thank you all Twitch chat for watching. Some announcements before we go. Because uh, this is the last thing for today, is that I will actually be back tomorrow hosting yet another GDQ Hotfix special. That'll be Jal Bagel speedrunning Monster Hunter World Iceborne. It's going to be specifically a category called Iceborne Percent, which is um, essentially just going to be speedrunning through the entire Iceborne DLC. We're actually going to skip the uh, the normal kind of any percent portion of the game. So 
Uh, really cool stuff, a lot of challenging fights. Should be a lot of fun. It's going to be a long one, so that'll be from 1 p.m. Eastern all the way to like 6 or around 6. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then other than that, uh, your subs, Prime Gaming subs, gift subs, and bitch cheered on the GDQ Twitch channel help support games on a quick hotfix. So if you enjoy the speedrunning content that we pump out daily, uh, definitely consider subscribing to the channel. And uh, hopefully I see a lot of you tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.